All right, so we're up to the coding part. Mrs. Fugil, are you thrilled to pieces? <laughs> I hope so, because I quite like coding. What's the program that we use? Okay, so we're going to use, obviously, the one supplied for the Arduino. Yep. And you've hopefully already downloaded it from self-service. And yep. you can see it. It should You should have saved it inside your little toolbar thingy. And so I'm just going to open it up. And when you open it up, you should get a fresh new, uh, what they call, sketch. Okay, so you, I, I just noticed that we've got, so we've got void set up, we've got um, round brackets, and then we've got curly brackets in there, and then we've got void loop, and the voids both in the blue and the loops in the mustard. So they're actually really important parts of coding, aren't they? Yeah, all your new um, files that you create, your new sketches, will all have a setup and a loop. And you need to have them, they can be blank, like for example, setup is obviously all the key things you need to set up your code, like for example, we're going to put in um, our left and right motors, that they're inputs and outputs, whatever, we're going to put them in setup. Loop is just things that you want to happen continuously, as it says, to run repeatedly. Yeah. If you don't want to run something repeatedly, you can keep that blank, yeah. but you have to have it in there because it's part of the system. So if it doesn't have that there, it'll send an error to us. Yeah, absolutely. So the first thing that I think we should do is definitely outline which um, pins we've identified as being our right motor and which pins we've identified as being our left motor. So Let's we should do, do that. that in setup. So that actually occurs outside of setup. If you want to name pins uh, a, a name that you want to give it, yep. you can give a pin any name you want. So what we will do is we're going to start with our right motor. So our right motors, both you and I chose pins 6 and 7 yep. for our right motors. So what we're going to do is we're going to type in INT. INT stands for integer. So we're going to tell the computer or the program that integer um, we're going to call motor right. I'm going to put a capital R for right. Mm -hmm. Motor right to go forward. And we had is equal to pin six. Six. And then every line of code, and this is critical for any code program, but you know, this one in particular, every line of code has to have a semicolon at the end. So and it, it knows, really stinks when you forget that. Yeah, because... it sends all these errors, error, error, error. You need to let the computer or the program know that your line is finished. And okay. that semicolon tells it it's finished. So what we've done so far, we've said we're going to set motor right forward as an integer. Yep. And it's going to be integer 6, which right. is pin 6 on our Arduino. Yeah, so may as well copy that and do that for all those and just change. So that means because our if we want to okay. then turn it backwards. Yep. So I'm going to change that to reverse because motors go forward or reverse yep that's going to be my pin seven. seven but you asked me earlier you said well how do I know which one's which well actually I don't know yeah I know but we're going to fix that later that's after the right. testing that's huh? right exactly yeah. so then that's paste for, again. I'm going to copy both of those and I'm going to paste them down here and just change it to left motor and so which pins did we use for the left motor? We used 8 and 9. So again, we don't know which is which, but, you I'm know. I'm just going to go 8 and 9 like that, that for now. For the best. And the reason we do that is so that when we do the testing later, it's really easy for us to change the numbers rather than having to go through our whole code and keep changing all yeah, the numbers. So now, anywhere that I write motor R forward, it knows that's pin 6. Brilliant. Okay. Now we need to set these guys up. So in the setup, you can notice this bit's in grey. Everything else that we've written has a colour, but grey is comments. <laughs> so what we're going to now set up is actually telling the um, program that these digital pins are outputs. So this part you use pin mode, right? So pin <coughs> mode is the terminology that we're going to use, and if it's correct terminology that Arduino code understands then it goes to orange because it's something in its library that it recognizes. That's so right. That, Pin right? mode you must use a capital M, M for mode and notice as soon as I finish writing it it goes orange right. so I know I'm on the right track Good. but every command in orange needs an open bracket yep. so you can actually tell it what to do mm -hmm. and then you need to close it. So what we're going to do is we're going to say 
which pin is in pin mode. So pin mode, the first one is pin 6. But we've called pin 6 motor right forward. Cool. So what so I'm going to do, that, I'm actually we? just going to copy that to avoid any mistakes. Because in coding, the second you make a mistake, it can't read what you've done. So you have to make sure it's exactly what you've written. So the first pin I'm setting up is motor right forward. I put a comma and I need to say that it's an output. And notice as soon as I've finished my output, it goes blue and then I close my brackets and I have to finish with a semicolon. It's now telling me that pin six will send a signal. That's what output is indicating. It's going to send a signal to the motor. Yep. We could use input in which it would receive a signal. So for example, if you had a sensor connected, you make that pin an input pin because hmm. you're going to receive information from the sensor. But in this case, we're sending information out to the motor, so okay. it's an output. So I'm just going to repeat that for all of them. I've got four pins, so I need four of those. I will change them in a moment. I just want to get them out. And there's only two, isn't there? There's input and output. So I'm either identifying them as input and output, and I'm, in this case, all of our um, pins are output pins. Correct. So I'm just changing that back to what we had reverse. Okay. And so okay. they're all the names that are above. So they're identifying pin six, seven, eight, and nine are all output pins. Exactly right. Okay. So that's Let's our setup. On. So the next thing we can do, now you can either put the next thing in setup or in loop. Now we're going to put it in loop just so we get a feel for what loop does. Yep, okay. So inside loop, so again, we've got to make sure we're inside the bracket. We're now going to tell these pins to do something. And the command you want to use for telling a pin to do something is digital write. It's not digital write as in right side. Digital write as in writing something. Mm. So we're going to write to the pin. Yep. So we type digital, and the second word usually always has a capital letter. So that's digital write. It went orange, so I know Perfect. I'm on the right track. And do you remember what has to happen with orange commands? Yeah, so I always open with a um, curl, uh, round, round bracket. Very round good. bracket. We're <laughs> yeah. going. And so in here, mm. I guess what we're going to do is again use all those motor, so the pin terms, and we're going to identify that as we're going to tell either it to do something. low or high. Well, let's have a look. So I'm going to first write to the pin six, which is my motor right forward. Sure. So I'm writing something to it, and then I. So first, you need to tell who are you writing to. So that's mm -hmm. why I put that first. Yep. You put a comma, and then you tell what do you want it to do. And so we want to turn it on. Yep. Now the language, as you mentioned, for on is actually high. Yeah. So high turns it on, and low, low turns, turns it, it off. off. So we're going to type high. It would be good if they just called it on and off. It would be, wouldn't it? Yeah, that would be way easier. Yeah. They like to make life difficult for I us. I know, yeah. like so many things in life. <laughs> Seriously. And again, we're going to close the bracket and put the semicolon. semicolon. So important. And we want to copy and paste that. So, well, what do we actually want to do? We want to turn the right motor forward, and I suppose we want but to we turn want to make the left sure, motor forward. Yeah, we do, but the other thing is that I guess we've got to make sure that the other one is off at the same time, because otherwise it's going to get confused, isn't it? So if I went and turned everything on, then it's going to be trying to spin forwards and backwards at the same time, and that's not going to work. Yeah, exactly. So I've got my pin 6 on, Yeah. but mm. my pin 7, which is the motor going in reverse, I don't want it going in reverse, so I'm going to turn that off. Technically, you don't need that. It won't turn nah. it on, but it's good for us to understand that that's exactly what's happening. So let's just do the same thing for our left one. Yep. So I'm just going to copy that again, paste that in and turn the left one on and the reverse one off. And at the moment they could be going in opposite directions, That's but right. then we're going to check it and change the either change the pins here or we can change the pins in the code. Exactly right. 